Hi everybody, it's Debbie from Inkylicious and I'm going to show you a few demos using our new By The Sea stamp collection. Um, they help you create lovely seascape scenes and you can also pair them along with some of the lovely sea beach themed stamps that we do. So come and join me, I'll put a full list of the products I use and the products you can use down in the comments section below. So let's get our gear together and we'll start stamping. Our stamps give you the ability to create a variety of styles, also a variety of sizes. So this one, even though it's like an ATC size, so it could be a mini card. Again, you could do ATC. Gift tags, where you could do a card that somebody could actually frame and put in a picture and give them a matching gift tag for the gift. Now again, you can actually keep repeating the C, so you could make quite a long landscape card. This is just using the shoreline, just as a nice simple card with some raindrop gems. You don't just have to use blues for your card, so this one is more of a pastel colour. And again, we've got a mint green. This one's a midnight sky and a midnight sea. If you like your landscape cards, again, you could just use the waves without using the shoreline. Or you could just use the shoreline and no waves. This one's had a little bit of the uh, shimmer put over it, so when you move the card it will glisten. So what I'm going to do first is just take you through making some backgrounds. Um, the really simple, you, your background is the main thing first and then we'll stamp over it. So depending on what you want to do, you can do water effects over your background. If you like your watercolour backgrounds, you can stamp over that. And again, different colours, different ways. For blending your inks, I'm going to be using a, a few different sort of brushes. But if you have your blending brushes, um, these are the ones that I showed in my previous video where you can actually take the handles off so they're a lot easier to hold. Um, you've got your regular blending brushes. I'm going to probably use a, an ink duster. Um, if you have a stencil brush, then you're fine to use one of those as well. Um, I'm also going to be using some of these detail brushes because these are what you can get in and create. Um, your waves and things, more shadow behind your waves. But I also have one of the round ones as well. Uh, the ones I use mainly now for my backgrounds are these style, which are just lovely flat brushes. So I've got one in a, a few colours. I've got my browns, my sort of beigey sand colours, turquoises, light blues, dark blues. So I'm going to get my ink pads out and then we'll get started. The best way to think about doing your colouring when you're doing your backgrounds is thirds. So if you're doing something like where you're going to incorporate the sky, so have the sky a third, the sea a third and the sand a third. But this can also just vary slightly and I'll show you with this one. So this one's done more on an angle but it's still a third, a third, a third. Whereas this one's done more straight so you've got a third, a third, a third. Now sometimes I, I do overlap my sea on my sand a bit and I'll show you that as we go. The inks I'm going to be using are all dye based. I'm not going to be using oxides on this style simply because if we do use some water with it then you're going to get the oxidisation effect in it where you don't want it. These you can blend regardless with water without getting any effects as such. So I've got my desert sand rich cocoa but they also do toffee crunch, peanut brittle, a, a lovely colours for the sand, um, summer sky for the skies, for the seas, teal, nautical blue, Paris dusk. But there's also, if you have distress inks, pumice stone, um, ice spruce is nice for the, if you're doing like a different coloured sea, for the skies, some stormy sky, uncharted mar mariner, and if you want a Caribbean sea, salvage patina. You need that one. That one and Teal's Eel, beautiful. So we'll do one of those first actually. 
So what I'm going to do first is I will start with my sand. So I'm just going to get this, shove all these out of the way. I'm just going to pick some of the sand up. And there's a mark on that one, so we'll go on that side. So let's do the wave on this one, um, the shoreline. So I'm just going to start in this corner and just bring the ink up to where I want it to meet the sea. And we can just fill it in down here then. And depending on what kind of card you use, some card it has a nice texture to it and it's it works then with you because it'll look like the sand. Even though I've got a mark on it, I was going to cut it off and I'm not. I'm going to start again, but I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'll trim this down anyhow. So I've got my sand on. So I don't bob into that one now. I'm going to start off at the back and bring it down to the sand. So I'm going to start off with, um, go with the turquoise. I'm going to go with nautical blue first. I'll try and keep my hands clean this time. No, look, I've done it already. We are going to be trimming this down quite a bit. And then all I'm going to do is just bring it so far down because when I go into the turquoise I'm going to go, we'll go teals first. I'm just going to swipe this across because I will be blending it through. Right, now we're going for the salvage patina. And you do need to go over your sand here. Because when you see pictures of the sea going over the sand, you do get this sort of green, blue-greeny colour. Now we'll start to get these all blended together now. Let's bring this one in a little bit more here, just to blend these two through. So we've got one background which we'll do the shoreline on and then we'll do another quick one that we can do the wave one across. And this time I'll try not to get my fingers in any ink. Although if you notice it has actually blended that one out of there. So right, what we'll do again is I'm going to start off with the shoreline. Um, I'm going to use a bit of pumice stone this time. Still probably with a bit of desert sand. Is that one. So pumice stone is just like a soft stone colour, obviously pumice stone. Um, so we're going across this time, so I'm just going to start to bring it in from here. And what we can do is we'll go into the desert sand and we'll just to brighten that up a bit. Let's fade this out now. Right, this time we'll do the seas in more of a blue colour. Let's get rid of some inks. So we've got Uncharted Mariner. Put the teal away. Um, summer sky, right, we'll do a sky on this one as well. So we'll, like I say, think of it in thirds. 
so this is going to be part C, C and sky. So what I'll do is just get a post-it. Do the sky first. the thing with it do not be perfect with your sky because anywhere that you miss it's going to look like clouds and then we'll have a bit of stormy sky as well okay so that's my sky I'm going to take the masking off that one and then what I'll do is I'll move it back onto the sky and just keep a slight little edge of your C there. Right, so let's do the C now on this one. Um, we will start with just a small amount of Paris dust. The thing with these as well is you can get wave effects if, if you just go sideways with them. So first of all, I'm just going to very lightly just go across this one just to get the initial. And then we're going to switch into not sure what colour we got here. Blue. Right, I don't want any more blue. Uh, we'll switch to Uncharted Mariner. to finish off with just a smidge of and then all I'm going to do now right if you have a dish or a spray or anything just get a standard paintbrush this is just some water and all I'm going to do with this one now is I'm just going to create some wave effects in here and this is this is just standard just super smooth card and the thing that this does if if, if your ink blending hasn't been perfect then you're just going to get a lovely soft texture through it what I'm going to do next, I'm going to dry these off because before we do any embossing, these need to be completely dry, otherwise the embossing will stick to any of your wet ink. Right, for the stamping, um, what I'm going to use is obviously Versamark. Uh, you can do this on a resist if you're using a coated cardstock with Versamark, but I'm just going to do it with the white embossing powder. This is Detail White, this is Wow. Um, obviously there's all different ones available. I, I do recommend the use of an antistatic bag. It'll just, if you've still got any areas that aren't quite dry, it'll just stop it sticking on there. So just give it a good tap and a good rub over. It's not going to hurt anything by giving it too much. So what we'll do first is we'll do the shoreline which is this one and also with the shoreline you get starfish you get footprints and you get some pebbles these are all photopolymer stamps not acrylic or silicone ones uh, 
and what you can do is decide where you want your shoreline to be the other thing with these is you do not have to ink up the whole of the stamp so if you're doing a smaller card you could just ink up the bottom edge on it so at the moment I'm gonna I'm gonna go to about here with my inking but the other thing is which I'll show you I will ink it all up if there's any areas after you've inked it up and applied your embossing powder that you don't want just use a brush to take it off and any first mark that's left on your card will look like a watermark then on it make sure I've got my bottom wave right so we're going to come in I like that because I like that that edge there so what we're doing is we're going half over where we mix the blue and the sand So we'll go there so even though I've inked all this up I'm not actually going to put embossing powder on that part so you can see that we've stamped that up if ever you do find that you have missed a little bit I've missed a bit there at the side I'm just going to get this this edge here and I'm just going to go in there and just pop some in and you can always fill in any areas with your white pen a trusted piece of folded cardstock. Then you'll see what I mean when I let's find a brush somewhere. This one. Right, I don't want to go all the way up here, so I'm just going to take some of this off where I want it to come down to. tap it off see what we've got take some of that off Okay, and when you're happy with it, just pop that to one side because we'll emboss them both together. So like I say, whatever's left, I don't know if you can see it on here, whatever's left on there of the verse mark will just look like a, a water effect on it. So we'll just pop that to one side a minute while we stamp the other one. So this time we're going to have the wave. And again, this is designed that you do not have to use the whole wave. So when I pop this over the middle, so this, this is quite a long one. So if you're doing a larger card, you can extend it and repeat stamp. Now for this part here, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over the front here with my wave and we'll, we'll kind of take it about that way but again I don't want all this in the background because I'm going to put some other waves so all I'm going to do is just ink up about halfway on the stamp and if there's any extra embossing powder we'll just take it off like we did last time so we'll go about there So we've got this far but I don't want this to come right up this far so I'm just going to take a little bit off because what I'll do is we'll put a wave in above that so I'll just miss a little bit of that edge So that's fine for me for this one. Right, 
when you're embossing don't forget let's turn it off it takes a good 30 seconds for your heat gun to heat up so don't switch it on and go straight to your card just give it that little bit of chance to heat up and once it's heated up once you do go it will start to turn pretty quickly What I've actually done just while I was letting them dry off is I've actually gone in and I've re I've used the Versa mark just as the watermarking pad so it just gives the background a little bit more texture in this one so I'm going to put this one to a side a minute while we finish this one off and all we're going to do now is add the waves so we've got two styles of waves and obviously they come in the distance and foreground so I'm going to start with my foreground stamp I'll just use my stamp pebble here and it's up to you whether you want to actually do all your embossing first so I'm going to make this one just so as it's catching the wave at the front here And what I'll do is we'll just alternate it a little bit. So we'll pop one here. Just catch that edge back in. We'll switch and we'll put some of the distant waves in. So like I say, you, you can do these one at a time if you want, but I'm just going to just do these so we, we can move on a little bit. So again, we'll get my piece of card for catching some embossing powder. That's the one. So that's embossed there. So we'll just get it heated up. Right, so we've got all our embossing done on both cards what we're going to do now is just add some detail which will bring your stamp into life now you can either use a paintbrush you can use the detail brushes which have got the really thin tips on them um, you can even use which I quite like you buy these in sort of multi packs they're just disposable makeup brushes these ones have got the foam tip and a brush tip so I'll probably use some of those as well so what we're going to do first of all is give this some shadow 
and all we're going to do with that I've got memento rich cocoa and I'll just use my acrylic block for this so I'm going to do is pop some on and I'm just going to take a small bit of water and all we're going to do is add some shadow so it doesn't matter which stamp set you're using it's the same principle with both okay so all we're going to do is just lightly go along this edge and then what this does is it, it gives you a wave the shadow on the beach okay and we'll do the same with this one So add a little bit more deeper on that one. And any that you get over your embossing powder will just wipe off. Right, so we'll just pop that. Just wipe that one off now. Right, same again. We can always add a little bit more shadowing on some of these if you want it to go a bit deeper in some areas. Or if you want to say add a little bit of white into anywhere. So we can bring the white back in. And this is a, a round um, detailer brush. So you can pick up some of your white. You could just come in and just add some sort of where the surf has been and the tide's going back out. So it's more or less a stippling action that we're doing on here. Right, so that's that one more or less finished because what we'll do is we'll stamp a sentiment up here. Now we're going to go on to this one and start adding some detail into it. So we're going to bring back in some of the blues that we've used. And what this does is it gives depth to your waves. So again, I'll take some nautical blue and we'll use some Uncharted Mariner. again I'm just going to pop a bit of water into this so like I say you can either use these sort of detail brushes which all you're going to do is just pick some up and all you're going to do is across your card is where your waves are is you're literally just going to put some shading underneath them Then you'll see it will just start to give your wave some depth to it. Um, let's go a bit thinner. Let's use one of these ones now. Right, we'll pull up some of this. And same again, in any of your waves at the back here. If there's too much on, just wipe it off onto your scrap paper. I'm sorry if I do go, when I'm sort of doing these sort of things, I just go into my own world okay and then sometimes when it dries off because obviously this is wet you may need to just come back and just add a slight little more bit in. I'll pop a 
bit more blue into this one now. So that gives you the impression that the wave's actually coming up from underneath. And you can take obviously a bit more time doing yours than what I am. It's such a lovely colour is the uh, nautical blue. Call that one done for that one. If you feel that you still need a little bit more shading in there, you can always come back in and then just add that shading in. Tissue, just wipe any excess off. So we've got our two here. Right, I also have one of the I've got one of the <coughs> white gel pens and a Signo pen. So if there's any areas that you feel that you you just say you want a few more little splashes on here somewhere. You can always come in and add little elements to it. Okay, so how obviously you, you, you can just spend more time on this than what I am. Same with this if you want just a bit more of an edge down here, or you want these to come out a little bit more. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll get the stamp with a sentiment. So I'm going to use one of the new sentiment sets on both. Um, one says, take me to the ocean, let me sail the open sea, to breathe the warm and salty air and dream of things to be. The other one says, follow the river and you will find the sea. So we'll do this card first. And it's entirely up to you if you want to use a, a stamp press or not. To have more magnets in this thing than uh, anything. So this one will emboss because it's on the dark background and then the other one will just stamp normal. Again, just to make sure that I haven't got any of this verse mark that hasn't finished, I'll just give it a quick anti static. You can normally tell with your stamp press because you can see where it's 
touching the card so don't be inclined to over press on them you don't need to okay so it's just only embossed if there's any little bits you can always just get a paintbrush just knock them off although with this kind of card it does look a bit like the sea so Like I said, oh, you no need to press on too hard with these. Okay, so we've got follow the river and you will find the sea. So what we'll do now is we'll just get these mounted and layered and then uh, we're ready for finishing. The other thing that you can do if you just want to add a little bit more depth or colour is you can come in and just with these are pastel pencils or um, I've got some Faber Castell Polychromos I've got Stabilo um, it's, it's, it just adds just a little bit more definition to areas if you and always remember the sea is moving so you can always give it that sort of definition of movement the nice thing about sort of pastels is you can add detail and you can just smudge it out the same here if we just wanted to add say a bit more blue back into some of this again we'll just give it some movement Okay, so let's mat and layer them up. So this one I'll just make just as a straightforward, just an A6 card. Then for the second card, we'll make it more of a, a picture one. Okay, so we'll pop this one in the middle. And again, we'll just. All the wings do is they just hold it off until you've actually centred it where you need it to be. So you're not actually sticking straight down, you're just going to find where you want it to go. About there. Okay, 
Okay, and then the stuff down. I mean, you could, if you wanted, just go around it with a, a pen just to give it a bit more framing. So there we have us two cards. I hope you enjoyed the demo. You can find all the stamps on our website at the moment. Um, and hopefully we'll get some more demos done soon because we've got lots of new stamps at the moment that are making their way slowly but surely onto the website. Speak to you all soon. Thanks.